everybody, and welcome to the FTW Podcast, the wrestling world in all its laughable glory. I am Harrison, and with me as always is Joe. Say hello, Joe. Whoa, whoa, whoa. What the fuck? How is it going? <laughs> Rob, say hello, Rob. I'm going to take you down, Kevin. Ooh, Kevin. Say hello, Kevin. Damn anesthesia. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> We also got a special guest uh, this week, Connor from the OK Fabe. Say hey, Connor. Hey, what's going on? I had a clever line I was going to open up with, but I can't really see it because it's smudged on my wrist. I can't really see it that well. <laughs> <laughs> Sing! And Garvin's Man in the Board. Stand this episode number 103, coming to you live on February 28th, 2012. And we're still looking for some good show intros. We haven't quite abandoned that yet. Um, we're up in the ante. Any intro set will be entered into a drawing to receive a free FTW Podcast t-shirt. So continue to send those in by calling 313-444-FTW4. 313-444-3894. If you'd rather email an audio file, you can send those to questions at FTWPodcast.com. Just remember to include your name and your email so we can get in touch with you. Uh, if if you're new to the show, check out FTWPodcast.com for more about us and how to get involved in tonight's show as well as upcoming shows. You can reach out to us on Twitter, Facebook, voicemail, text message, email, carrier pigeon. You can even stalk us in the bushes if you like. We'll be bringing your comments and questions throughout the show, so if you want your voice to be heard, let us know. Uh, tonight's live chat can be found at FTWPodcast.com slash live, and you can also email questions at FTWPodcast.com. And if you're on Twitter, use the hashtag FTWLive. Let's make it a little easier on Garvin. Uh, we'll be reading all your messages on the air throughout the night. So our question of the week last week was, what is the true main event for WrestleMania 28? Is it Jericho Punk, Brian Sheamus, Triple H and Taker, or Cena Rock? What do you guys think before we get to what the fans say? Oh, you know, I'm going to probably go here with Cena Rock only because they've been hyping it for a year. If I don't understand why there was any discussion that it isn't Cena Rock. Every time they promo it, Cena Rock is on the graphic. Yeah, I mean, but well, that's that's yeah, okay. We asked what the true main event was. What do we think it is? It's our opinion. It, I still, I still say it's Cena Rock. That's definitely the biggest match of the night. Well, I guess yeah, the question event. really is what? Yeah, it's true. What is the main event? What do you guys consider the last match of the show to be the main event? Technically, or it's kind yes. of like we, yeah. So it's definitely. I think it's Cena Rock because, like Joe said, they've been building it for a year. I mean. That is one thing that's been kind of aggravating me is the fact that they've announced, oh, I'm going to the main event at WrestleMania. You, that match, that match, that match, that match, and that match, too, are all going to the main event at WrestleMania. It's an interesting concept. Yeah, that is one thing that, that, is, one thing that, that is kind of irritating. I mean, it's very clear that WWE is billing, um, maybe not the main event, but the, 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 the title match or the, the, the main main event, the super main event, uh, is uh, Cena Rock. But... Um, I mean, a lot of our fans brought up really good points. Uh, Noi Noi eighty three on Twitter, uh, Twitter said, at this point, Triple H and Taker, uh, the Rock Cena have feuded via social media. Brian Sheamus is yet to begin, and Punk is feuding with uh, Chris Brown. So it is kind of interesting to see that he's bringing a point that, um, uh, as far as what you've seen on TV, Triple H and Taker have been the ones that have been taking the most shots at each other over the ter- over the course of this whole thing. Um, Leading up to WrestleMania. On our Facebook wall, Kenneth K said uh, Daniel Davidson uh, versus Sheamus. Uh, he's in the uh, winner of the Royal Rumble made events WrestleMania crowd, unless Zack Ryder is wrestling, and when, uh, which then Zack Ryder's match is the main event. That, okay. But he that's an interesting point because that is old school. Winner of the Royal Rumble main event is the main event of WrestleMania. Look what happened last year. Del Rio won it, and where was he on WrestleMania? He was, oh yeah, the opening match. Yeah. Curtain jerker with Edge, yeah. 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 So it is an old school viewpoint that it is sadly uh, falling to the wayside. Uh, Zaheer, a uh, big fan of, big friend on Facebook, great guy, uh, said a casual fan would say that Cena Rock, because of how it's being built up, excuse me, I'm not a casual fan, I would say that, and he said, well, the Rock's in the match, so that explains itself, but the way he sees it, the true main event is Jericho versus Punk. In his opinion, he, re- he reckons that this match will get quite overshadowed by Rock Cena, so it'll be more like Savage versus Steamboat at WrestleMania 3. That's a really good point. That's a damn good point actually i mean what do you guys think about that one that do you see basically jericho versus punk if cena rock wasn't happening jericho versus punk could easily be the main event but because of that match it is going to get overshadowed so like savage versus yeah, Steamboat I, at wrestlemania see, i even think it's going to be overshadowed by triple h undertaker only because it's 20 and 0 on the streak that now you see that exact point that's what kyle said kyle k said on uh 
our fa- uh, fa- front of Facebook. He said the match that changed it from a might buy to a must buy is the Taker Triple H Hell in a Cell. Uh, he said he knows this is the third time, but he only he thinks that because last year's match was incredible, uh, he has no doubt that this year's match. Once you add the cage, is just going to surpass it. Uh, he thinks, and he also is throwing down the gauntlet, saying Triple H is going to win. So, good on him for that one. Uh, yeah, he says, that, you know, you put, you're looking at the Undertaker, probably the Undertaker's last match, and probably Triple H's. Put that inside the structure that Undertaker made famous, and the question of the main event, in his mind at least, is closed. And I got to be honest, that is a really good argument. I mean, you can't ask for anything more than Triple H versus Taker, twenty and zero. In a Hell in a Cell at WrestleMania. I mean, you can't make that bigger. I do have one little side point. This is just my opinion about the whole thing. I think that while the WWE Championship match between Punk and Jericho is something to watch, and that uh, that the uh, comparison between Steamboat and uh, Savage is probably really dead on. I can't really think of anything else to compare it to. I think, and this is just me, I think Taker's matches at Mania have surpassed in terms of importance uh, title matches at Mania. Beforehand, title matches at Mania were a big, big, big deal. But now mm-hmm. I think Taker's matches at Mania have surpassed that. I mean, I think either I think they did like an interview about the whole thing when they were building up last year's match. But that the that you know you see title changes happen all the time, TV pay per views, blah blah, all time of the year. But you never, never see Taker lose, and it's become its own attraction. I think it's kind of bigger than the title matches now. Kind of, that's an excellent point. That's what the the live chat is saying that uh, titles should always be the main event. But like you said, Taker at WrestleMania open only happens once a year. So, you know, it's like a trip to Disney. Yeah, you can go to Cedar Point all the time, but you only go to Disney once a year. So it's like Christmas. So, yeah, it's going to be a big event. And I I think Kyle's got a really good point that add that plus Hell in a Cell, plus the fact that these guys, both Triple H and Taker, Triple H has got one foot out the ring. Taker's coming up to the end of his uh, career. You know, that solid, solid argument for that being the main event. Anyway, speaking of Triple H and Taker in the Hell in a Cell, that is going to be our Lumberjack match later today with uh, Rob taking on Kevin. If you listened last week, you knew these two started arguing, and we said, you know what? That's it. We're sticking both of you in the cage. Lumberjack match between the two of them later today. It's going to be fan-frickin-tastic. You know it's going to be a Lumberjill match. Oh, that is... Only if you're in a Joe. Oh. oh, hey, hey, for another game, Kevin. <laughs> I can't. I'm already freaking numbed up as it is. Uh, well, can, can you do this, uh, can, Kevin? Can you do something real quick for me? Can you get your mouth really close to the mic and just shout "Stone Cold, Stone Cold" like six or seven times? <laughs> <laughs> wow. Shut up, Joe. You were thinking it. A uh, question from you guys that you wanted to let us know. Uh, you can ask us questions by emailing questions at fdwpodcast.com or send us a tweet at fdwpodcast on our Facebook wall, facebook.com slash fdwpodcast. Mr. Lucha Libre on Twitter asked, uh, what are your thoughts on Brian Kedrick being released from TNA? Uh, basically, we asked, we repeated this on Facebook. Kevin said, uh, I'm sorry, Kevin and not our Kevin, uh, only if they do like I said they should and resurrect the Cruiserweight division. Otherwise, guys like him really have no place. Uh, Cody L said, I dig the move, which is why they'll never let it, it it's never going to happen uh and chill mascara says he smokes too much cough weed for the wwe same with rvd i miss him in tna when will he show up won't be wwe uh what do you guys think well Chill's exactly right. I, I i love the guy i'm a huge i was always a pretty big brian kendrick fan but it's not gonna happen i ring of honor makes a lot of sense i, I wouldn't be surprised if he goes there well, and let's not forget, before Kendrick came to TNA, he was with the WWE, and they got rid of him simply because they had no place for him. So he came to TNA. I don't see why WWE would change their mind and take him back. No, I mean, I liked him. I thought I thought he had a great gimmick, but... I kind of... I, I, Go ahead, I Connor. just think that his, his, his gimmick right now, the whole, uh, you know, uh, walking on the line of, uh, of genius and insanity, I guess, kind of gimmick you want to call it whatever you want to call it is definitely not going to fill the mold of wwe at least not the way they're going with right now arguably and i'm not trying to bash on tna but if he can't really get over in tna if they just let him go after a wwe run chances are he's probably not gonna be able to get his foot back in the door 
No, that's a really good point. Uh, all right. So another question was uh, at Piccadilly on Twitter asked, uh, talk about the WWE booking and consistencies. You can either win a 30-man Royal Rumble or a 10-man Battle Royale to get a title shot at WrestleMania. Uh, I want to talk about this for a second because I think the only reason the Royal Rumble gets you a title shot at WrestleMania is that's because it's always been that way. And you can't do another Royal Rumble for uh, another title. So they got two basically somewhat equal titles. The 10-man Battle Royale on Raw to get a title shot at WrestleMania. I think that's... I don't know. I, I I think yeah, it's it doesn't have parity exactly, but uh, I don't, I don't know. I, I think it's just the Royal Rumble's always been around, so it's always going to be around that way. But with two titles, you got to do something, right? Yeah, and the thing, Harrison, uh, to add here is that uh, historically, um, I, I read this. I didn't do the research, so maybe I should do that uh, while we continue <laughs> on the show. But um, the historically, it's always been the second guy. Like the like the um, the second to last guy in the Royal Rumble always gets a title shot as well. The, run, the runner up, you mean? Yeah, the runner up. So um, just throwing it out there that just that's just how booking is. Once they had the two titles, the runner up always got a title shot as well. Uh, but let me do that research before. No, that's fine. Uh, so it's it, it, I think the ten man battle royale on Raw. Uh, was just an excuse to get Jericho up against CM Punk. It was really all it was. And uh, I don't know. I mean, I can't think of anything that would really have the staying power of the Royal Rumble that you could really use to build up WrestleMania unless you bring back the idea that Elimination Chamber gets you the other title shot. So you win the Royal Rumble, you get one title shot, and then Elimination Chamber gets the other one. So, I mean, they could do that. I mean, Elimination Chamber's been around for a couple of years, so they got something there, and it's its own pay-per-view. So, Well, they did that in the past. They did that in the past where I think one, if not two of the chambers at one point were for WWE and World Heavyweight Championship shots. I could be wrong. I know they've done it at least once. where the winner They did it was- once. I want to say it was a year or two ago. Yeah, yeah probably. That, I, I thought that was effective. I thought that was great because at least the chamber, it's not like a multiple regular multiple man match where it's like, hey, you know, you throw over the guy. It's a brutal, barbaric, cage-like match. At least that gives a little bit more credibility than a random uh, 10-man Royal Rumble or Battle Royal, whatever the hell you want to call it. Um, plus, to, to be fair, I, I know that the 10-man Battle Royal thing was literally thrown together at the last minute. Yep. Plus, you're kind of right, though. Um, how other way are you going to get Jericho over because – if Jericho couldn't beat Punk in the chamber, you got to think of some validity, uh, valid way to get him as the number one contender. And so it's just kind of like, a, I guess, make the best of a bad situation. Well, it's a bad situation. They painted themselves into a corner. I think that's the problem. So oh, right. I agree. All right. So moving on. Last week, we unveiled our plan to create a Hall of Shame based on the judgment of us fans. The official induction ceremony will take place Saturday, March 31st, and we asked you for nominations, and you sent a ton of it, a ton of them in, and all of them we completely agree on. Uh, now, these nominations are just that. They're just nominations. No. Some They may make it. They may be spared for another year. Uh, that will be up to you, the listeners, as we'll be posting a poll a week or so before the final event to kind of gauge interest, and then we're going to make might take an executive decision if we think one is really, really good. Uh, for worst wrestler, the nominations are Gilberg, Rico, Norman Smiley, Dink, DJ Gabriel, The Great Kali, Giant Gonzalez, Mongo McMichael. That was the one that we talked about the most in pre-show. I nominated The Goon because I hated that. The Nasty Boys, Shockmaster, and Brutus the Barber, Beefcake, and Zodiac. He was so bad, he was nominated twice. You can still send in the nominations, as we'll be accepting those for another two to three weeks. However, we're also going to have a manager's wing. So this week, we need you to send in your list of the worst managers in the history of wrestling. Uh, You can tweet us those. um, You can send, I'm sorry, you can tweet us those, or you can post them on our Facebook page, or you can email them to uh, questions at ftwpodcast.com. So there's your nominations for the FTW Hall of Shame Class of 2012. So we'll be looking forward to when we start doing this. uh, when we start announcing uh, when we have the induction ceremony, that should be pretty freaking awesome. Um, any immediate reactions to this before we move on to Impact? They're all good picks. That's I'll a list of a whole bunch of shitty wrestlers. <laughs> <laughs> Can't really complain about a single one. That's just great. Uh, and Garth, Rob's just uh, going to growl. All right. Yeah, Garth's just I, 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 I'm caught between the fact that uh, I'm a Chicago Bears fan, so I don't think Michael should make Michael should be on the list. But then I'm a pro wrestling fan, and I realize that 
his move set consisted of maybe three different moves. Three point stance into uh, he, he, he'd do the three point stance and charge at you. He'd uh, he, he'd throw you around a little bit, and then I think he had like the pile driver for his finishing move. Yeah, but but in his defense, there, uh, Hacksaw Jim Duggan had those same moves. This is true. So hey, there's that suck. <laughs> but he also had the two by four. Yeah, the two by four and the flag. Uh, well, Gar, you're back yeah, from- that's the thing. Duggan had his own gimmick. McMichael okay. never really developed a gimmick other than just, "Hey, I used to be a football player. Now I'm a pro wrestler." Well, that's what. No, oh, all right. Uh, I mean, we can. We, yeah, okay. Uh, Gar, hey, uh, you're back from it, the, the archives. What's up? Well, first, um, in the chat, um, RKO voices. Uh, he is uh, questioning how Norman Smiley got on this list. Um, Diva Jill is also. Uh, Saying don't talk shit about Goldberg or Gilbert, sorry. Oh, I'm sorry. Right no. slip. Uh, okay. Dude, Jill, you're fired. <laughs> <laughs> get out of our Those, chat. They're nominations. That doesn't mean they're going to get chosen. These were sent in by people, and we put them on there. Some were sent in more than once. I'm not going to say who, but yeah, they were sent in. We're not right now. We're not going to. We're not going to. We're not the Academy Awards. We're not going to discount people just because some people might like them or not. So Norman Smiley's on the list because someone sent it in. There. And plus, isn't it because of wrestling ability, not necessarily their persona? It's their in ring work, right? Or is it overall? I would uh, say overall. overall. Yeah, it's yeah. it's whatever you want to choose. That's why you, you got to do overall. That's why Zodiac and Brutus is on here. All right, All right. and just just to quickly go back to the Royal Rumble conversation. Yeah. Um, looking at the last five years, there's only been one time that the runner up didn't get a title shot at WrestleMania, and that was last year uh, because Santino was the runner up. So. Oh, yeah. uh, <laughs> but 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 this time Jericho, he didn't get it either. But that's he he eventually got it, but only because of the ten man battle royale. It wasn't like announced at the Rumble. Well, but that's you know that that's not really in the consideration because of how things are booked. I mean, you you could say the same thing about you know the, the other four times that it happened, uh, you know, over the last five years. So, uh, but two thousand eight, it was Triple H was the runner up. He, he went on to WrestleMania to face Cena and Orton. 2009 was Triple H. Uh, he went on to face Orton. Uh, Cena was the runner-up in 2010 to face Batista. So, yeah, so historically, not- that, that was an accurate statement. All right. So maybe it's like the also ran, you know? We're going to get you a title shot, even though you're not going to get the uh, Royal Rumble win. Although all three of those guys already had Rumble wins. Uh, all right. So, Rob, Impact. Fire away. What was your absolute favorite moment about Impact? Was it ODB losing to Gail Kim? Uh, no, it was oh. not. You sure? I'm sure. Okay. Picking the best moment of the night, uh, I have to go with uh, Magnus and Samoa Joe uh, against Morgan and Crimson. Uh, and the fact that they let uh, Magnus and Samoa Joe get another win to retain the tag team titles. Uh, the uh, These two tag teams have been putting on... Uh, a great uh they they've Clinic. been putting on a great series of matches. Uh they're really building a good feud and uh TNA is starting to get their storylines together, building on the uh tension between Matt Morgan and Crimson over losing. Okay. Uh James Storm, Jeff Hardy, Kurt Angle, and Bully Ray. Uh if you had to pick from these four guys who would walk away with the title in the near or would carry the company in the near future, uh who would you like it to be? Please don't say Jeff Hardy. I mean, do you want James Storm to keep it for 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 the near future, or would you rather see like Bully Ray take it? I would like to see. I I, I would like to see, and I think both James Storm and Bully Ray will get their chance. Okay. Um, like I could see James Storm eventually taking the title from Bobby Roode, and then maybe starting a feud: James Storm versus Bully Ray. See, now I got to be honest with you, Rob. If you came to me last year and said that I would agree with you that Bully Ray should be in the TNA main event title picture, I mean, you, you, you just, I just, I'd punch you in the foot, I'd punch you in the nose. I mean, it would it'd just be, it'd be ridiculous, because, I mean, the Bully, I mean, yeah. first of all, the Bully Ray character at that time was terrible, but go figure that Bull, there was this amazing singles wrestler just waiting for yeah. his chance. After all these years, I mean, he still yeah. got it. I, I, I mean, it's... The the same thing with me. It, it would have gotten the what? Are you stoned? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Reaction. Um, but yeah, I mean, Bully Ray's really 
he, he's really turning into a strong heel. He's surprisingly better on the mic than I thought he would be, and uh, he, he's really turning into a big contender. A uh, couple things from the chat room. Diva Jill is saying those two teams, talking about Magnus and Samoa, uh, and Morgan and Grimson are saying they could fight every week as far as, she can, as she's concerned. I agree with this. And uh, RKO Voices responded, aren't those the only two teams in TNA right now? Technically, yes. Actually, no. There's a third team, uh, Madison Rain. Well, no, because they're fighting no, with no, each other. Um, so even no, though they're uh, the knockout tag team champions. Damn it. Damn it, Joe. The Mexicals. Uh, the... Uh, <laughs> Oh, Mexican America. America. Thank you, Mexican America. Yeah, they are still. You had it right the first around. time. Shut up, bro. <laughs> Damn it, I, I kept. I'm like. I kept saying. My mind kept saying Mexicals, 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 and I'm like, shut up, brain. That's not it. <laughs> but yeah, uh, they they are still technically around. We won't be seeing them for a long time. <laughs> no, no, no. For whatever reason, I mean, you know. Well, anyway. Uh, all right, so. Uh, it, it's it's like you got to look at Impact and you got to think with WrestleMania being ramped up, you know Impact's kind of going well. We're kind of falling to the wayside right now. I mean, do you think that they're going to come out fighting, or do you think they're going to kind of take this season of uh, weeks and kind of take a step back, reassess? Because they've had a lot of managerial shakeups up top. You know, do you do you see that kind of happening, or do you think that they're like, you know what, we're going to go out? It's the you know it's it's our show, damn it, and we're going to do it week after week. Uh from what I've seen so far, I think they're going to keep trying to put a good uh, product out. I mean, they they know what's going on. They know that Raw's um, ratings are dropping. Um, they know that the WWE is struggling right now. I think they're going to try oh, to take advantage that is... of that. Come and... on. That's like, I mean, that's like saying when Tyson isn't dominating the first three rounds, he's struggling. It's just... They're not struggling. They're just not doing as good as they usually Creatively, do. Creatively, they are. I, I would oh, say they're struggling because they're not doing. All right. Because they're they're not doing what we've come to expect from them, storyline wise, booking wise. Okay, uh, I'll, I'll concede that. So, I all right. Let's say TNA... we don't need to set up another lumberjack match here. <laughs> <laughs> I think TNA is on the verge of of really kind of getting a good chunk of momentum with them, and with WrestleMania around the corner, I think. From a booking perspective, it looks like they're doing the right thing. They're not putting all their cards on the table with Victory Road, their upcoming pay-per-view. They're mm-hmm. using it as a build to a bigger pay-per-view and giving lockdown a little bit more significance. So that way, they're not trying to go head-to-head with WWE. They're kind of doing their own thing. And i got to agree with Rob. Their storylines, in my opinion, have t- almost totally 180 from everything they've done, what, like six months ago? It's really come a long way. Yeah, yeah, absolutely, Connor. And, and you're right. I, I could totally see them using that to build up to. Because you got to think at the same time. I mean, how many people really want to spend forty dollars on a pay per view, and then two weeks later spend another forty dollars on another pay per view? So you know, taking a step back and using it to build up and well, you know, really I, push for another pay per view the the month later. I mean, that's that, that's smart business. Yeah, and and for WrestleMania, it's a lot more than forty, isn't it? Oh, it's, it's, it's like. 60. 60, yeah. If you get in the HD feed, it's like 60, I think. I forget. It's 70, it's 70 for HD. Oh, my God. Yeah. All right. So, uh, cool, cool, cool. Yeah, uh, Impact's definitely taking a turn for the better, which is something that's always happy to say. It's always glad to say. Joe, SmackDown, what was your absolute favorite moment about it? I got, I've got i got two. One was a segment. One was a match. Opening the show, you've got Daniel Bryan talking about, you know, his win in the Elimination Chamber. And then, who comes out? But the fucking Miz. And totally hypes, hypes up Daniel Bryan saying, I knew you had what it takes when you, were my, when you were my apprentice on NXT. You know, I knew you'd be great. I just had to push you and now look at you. I main evented WrestleMania last year. You're going to main event WrestleMania this year. Congratulations. Yada, yada, yada. It was a great segment because it actually went back to WWE's history, even though it's only you know a couple of years old on that one, and they actually remembered it. Unlike you know where they WWE tends to forget things like you know Billy and Chuck having their wedding or Too Cool <laughs> at one point being a little uh, light in the light in the loafers there, but you know they forget about things. I'm glad they actually went back and reminded the fans that. That actually happened. It was really cool. Um, but then you come down all the way to the main event for the other moment. CM Punk 
and Daniel Bryan face off. Punk picks up the win, but I mean, it was it was a little overbooked with uh, two false starts. Um. I'm sorry, one false start. I apologize. Uh, they fought so many times. I'm, it's all a blur to me now. But the matches that CM Punk and Daniel Bryan have been having together have been wonderful. Mm-hmm. Yeah, was SmackDown just... was basically a a best. It was it was a, it was a two out of three falls match between Bryan and Punk, which was awesome. You know, not necessarily booked that way, but still, I mean, that's basically what we got, which was fantastic. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, those two guys, just the way they're working with each other, the mix of styles, it, it's just phenomenal to watch. It was just, it, it's one of those things, you know, it made up for things like Great Khali beating Drew McIntyre and David Otunga beating Ezekiel Jackson. Who the fuck did Ezekiel Jackson piss off to lose to David fucking Otunga? Uh, no, 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 no. Drew McIntyre. No, no, Drew McIntyre is the one that clearly pissed somebody off. I would argue that Zeke is at least looking okay. Drew, the great Kali. I mean, come on. I I, I, just can't, I just can't believe Ezekiel Jackson will lose to David Otunga. I kind of said the same thing. And to be honest with you, that whole the whole SmackDown in terms of matches and everything, I think Brian Punk saved it. Even with the whole chaotic end with the GMs, I just uh, ugh, I, I, the the match itself was just pure. I, I don't even know how to what word to describe it. It was amazing. It's probably one of the best matches I've seen in a long time on TV. And the first time they fought, it was just kind of, you know, Jericho interfered. There's no clear cut winner. Not that there was a clear cut winner in this one, but just the in ring ability was freaking amazing. But yeah, Kali and McIntyre and then Otunga beating Ezekiel Jackson a little kind of made me scratch my head a little bit. Yeah, I mean those were a little, but I think the high points definitely outweighed the low. Oh, definitely, definitely. Yes. Okay. Uh, any any massive low points other than Big Z getting squashed that you wanted to talk about before we move on to Raw? Drew McIntyre getting squashed by Kali. Yeah, what Thank the you. hell is that? The guy, I, he was undefeated. Oh, he was the anointed one by McMahon. And, you know, now this happens. I just, yeah, I mean, the, other than Mark Henry versus Big Show yet again, that's getting as annoying as Orton versus Christian. Just well, like, what, seriously, not every week. To be fair, though, at least Christian and Orton can put on a, a very good wrestling matchup. Yeah, if they, if right. they put on. But you're right. I see what you're saying about the repetition, seeing it over and over, and how, 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 how far dead can they beat this horse? I get it, but at least Christian and Orton can at least put on a, a solid wrestling clinic for a little while. True. Okay. Yeah, I mean, that's about it. All right, cool, cool, cool. Uh, Kevin, y'all numbed up Novocaine to nines. How was Raw in your eyes? Uh, decent. Yeah. Um, uh, Punk comes out, supposed to face Ryan immediately, but Jericho comes out for a promo. Um, looked like Jericho was awfully nervous. I don't know, he just wasn't himself, and he just looked like... He's kind of saying, this is my first big promo leading up to WrestleMania. Uh, just didn't seem didn't seem like the Jericho yeah. that we've come to know. I, I don't know. Now, let, let me be clear about one thing. A bad Jericho promo is still a pretty good promo for most people. Yeah. So I'm not saying that it was bad, but it wasn't to Jericho's standards. So, you know, kind of looked like it threw Punk off, too, from what he was trying to do and just seemed awkward all around. Eventually, we do get the match, which once again goes no contest because uh, Punk it or uh, I'm sorry, uh, uh, Jericho interferes. What I'm trying to say, um, Teddy Long and Laurinaitis have their blah blah blah, whatever, doing their thing. I don't know. Um, you know, I, after the match from SmackDown, which was just so amazing, you, you know, you knew it wasn't going to live up to be the same thing, but they really have to go no contest. I mean, have somebody lose by DQ or something. That was my only argument. Have Daniel Bryan win by DQ. You know, I don't know. It, it's just, you, you know, after all the controversy, you wanted some resolution if you're going to have another match, and they didn't do it. That was kind of my thought there. Uh, Kelly Kelly wins. Yay. 
Uh, Cena and The Miz have a pretty decent match. Um, we got a tag match, and yay. <laughs> hey, hey, know. hey. You're, you're telling now through that match. Now, when you watch that match, you don't think Kofi and Ziggler came out clearly on top? Well, obviously, but that's the problem that I have with this entire match is why are they pairing R Truth and Kofi up? And why are they pairing what well, Ziggler and Swagger at least makes sense? But, you know, I mean, maybe Ziggler needs some rest with the injuries that have happened, but mm-hmm. I, I don't know. This, why? Why are I, you pairing these guys up? The this is actually think- the third time. This is the third time. They've they've done it on Superstars the last two weeks, I believe. Um, yeah, it is kind of strange that they that they would pair them up because they were on separate, you know, sides of the spectrum from Yeah. You know, but I gotta right. be honest, when I when I watched watching over the course of the past few weeks and Kofi working these matches, once he got away from uh Air Boom, I'm starting to think that Kofi Kingston is the heir apparent to the Rey Mysterio Empire. This guy is going to be the next face of probably SmackDown, I'd say, in about two years. He's yeah, going to be the new I, Rey Mysterio. Yeah, Harrison, I'd agree with you. I think they need to t- tweak him, obviously, just a little bit, you know, mm-hmm. but... Um, He's you know, excited. Make him get over a little bit more, but yeah, I, I, we talked about it last week. I think Kofi's got all the tools, and I would I would definitely agree. Yeah. Um, found it very interesting. Eve got a long promo. Um, I thought it was pretty good. You know, particularly for the uh, total diva hater that I am. So uh, I, I found that interesting. I'm interested to see where it goes. Um, you know, and we'll see over the next few weeks what they're going to do with this. But, you know, clearly maybe they needed a, a female heel. Maybe uh, Karma's not ready yet, you know, even after her appearance at, uh, at at the Royal Rumble. Maybe she's not ready, you know, for full time yet. But I did find that interesting. And, and you know, it was kind of nice to see, a, you know, D would get a long promo. I'll give him that. They never give him mic time. So good for yeah. them. Yeah, uh, I got to agree. I mean, especially after you've seen weeks after weeks of Eve looking, you know, concerned, you know, and, and, and you know, the the classic, you know. Uh, you know, the waif over on the side that's just worried about her man. And then to see her go out there on the mic and really, I mean, she kind of owned it, you know? I mean, the crowd booed her yeah. and hated her and kept calling her a hosky, but you're right. I mean, she had a long promo. She carried it, and she did a really good job. Two things, though. One, do you think that she needed to go to the ring for the promo? Uh, I would say so I because... I with it, why not? Yeah, I, when, you're, when, you're cutting a, when you're cutting a promo like that, it helps to get him in the middle of the ring in the crowd, especially when it's a heel yeah. promo. If it's a face yeah. promo, yeah, you could probably do that over TV, um, it's not as important, but I think with a heel to really get the crowd against you, they have to be able to look down and see you right there. And uh, the chat is saying that uh, give it a few months and he and Eve's going to be a huge female uh, heel. You guys agree with that? Uh, I could see I that happening. So. Another yeah. possibility. I'm just throwing this out there. Do you guys think that maybe? And again, it's kind of cliche. Just throwing it out there. Do you think maybe we'd see Swagger versus uh, Ryder Mania for U.S. title with Eve in Swagger's corner? Maybe, but if they're doing with this with E, they got to have something bigger in mind for. Her. Well, I it's certainly hope so. Sort of I'm, I'm just saying it's a kind of a booking cliche to go that route and kind of do yeah. the whole underdog. But I'm just saying, do you think that that might be a possibility? Not at WrestleMania. If it was any other, if it was any other pay per view, yeah. But if they're building this right now and we still got four weeks till WrestleMania, uh, I'd still, say she's getting a match. I'd say Swag Swagger Ziggler. I mean Swagger Ryder. God damn it! You think um, another mixed tag? It, mixed tag? No, I think I think I think Swagger Ryder is a possibility. I don't think Eve's going to be involved because you already have Vicky Guerrero there as a managerial type place. Yeah. Unless unless you're busting Swagger out or you're dropping Vicky from from the the union there. Well, it would be just purely for just adding insult to injury. I mean, yeah, you're right. Vicky would be there too, and be, you'd have enough story without Eve. But just kind of a little like you know, okay. thorn in the side, kind of adding insult to injury. I don't know, but. It really, we we, we got to talk about The Rock. Comes back, basically says covers and goosebumps. He has his notes on his arm. Cena comes out, cuts a promo. Kev, take it away. Yeah, um, they have their smack fest. That's really all that I wanted to say about it. And they go back and forth. and I mean, they're, they're both great on the mic. What else is there to say? Uh, you know, it's build up. And, you know, the, the heat seems legitimate. I mean, I, I honestly, you know, does anybody else honestly think these guys really don't like each other? Because I do. And even if it is just part of the kayfabe, it's done so well and done in a way that it looks legitimate. I mean, they're doing a great job building it. Um, 
you know, it's it's going to be interesting. I still think other matches are going to overshadow it. I agree, you know, you know, with uh, with the comments from earlier that it could be like uh, Wrestle WrestleMania three where Steamboat and Savage overshadowed the quote unquote main event at the at the end of the night. So, you know, it, they're both great on the mic, and, and it looks like real animosity. Which is what I, they're going I, for. Yeah, so I got it. I got it. Fake or kayfabe or real? It's it, it. It looks real. I'd argue kayfabe up until the point that right at the end, before they went off the air, The Rock very clearly looked up the ring and said "motherfucker," like spat it out. Like you could tell that Cena that. got. Yeah, Cena got under his skin. Oh. It was like they had two scenes right before The Rock came off. Went before he went up and did his little uh, thing so they could get that framed picture with the logo. And it was Cena had just left. He was walking up the arena. Cena, le- uh, Cena leaves, points to his back, and they cut back to Rock. And Rock very clearly, he's not even looking at the camera. He just looks up the ring and he just goes, motherfucker. Like, I really think they're getting underneath each other's skin. Well, and at the That's same point, great. I mean, you know, with with Cena doing the, 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 like the whole pointing out that the Rock was reading his notes, notes off his wrist. Yeah. yeah, I mean that was that was definitely out of character. That definitely uh, caught Rock off guard. But to say that the Rock put on a good show last night, um, I think is a mistake. Uh, the Rock was pretty awful uh, last night. I thought that was like the most boring promo ever. Up um, until Cena came out, yeah. Up until Cena came out, and then you got interested. But just to tie this back into the conversation we had, uh, maybe it was last week, uh, maybe it was the week before, but. You know how how the WWE is trying to make you make a decision on backing The Rock or Cena, and I got to say, after last night, I am really leaning towards backing Cena, which is something yeah. I haven't been able to say in a long time. Yeah, I'm same. Completely with you, Garf. Yeah, same yeah, here. I, uh, I mean, uh, for, uh, up until now, I've been backing The Rock. I've been excited to see him back in the ring. But and you you bring up a good point, Garvin, and this may have led into what Harrison caught with the motherfucker thing when uh, Cena came out and basically called the rock out for reading notes off of his wrist. You know, that, that may have been what finally got the rock going. Oh, he's not going to kill you now. Here's my uh, thing though. Here's my thing. It's just like, it's, it's who controls the crowd. I think really has, I think, I mean, that's who's got the edge. And I still want to say rock really controlled the crowd a lot better than Cena. Um, I think, I mean, while it's not, it's definitely not Rock's best work. I also think it's not Cena's best work. That was really dry on Cena's part too. Like I was sitting there going, "Really, this is the best you guys have?" Well, the at least show... Rock had the crowd chanting, you know. And as annoying as it was with Rock going, guess what? That's trending worldwide right now. You know, on everything. Yeah, it, it's that, annoying and stupid. But he still had the fans eating out of the palm of his hand. Yeah, at the same point, but I do want to point out uh, two things from the chat. Diva Jill saying The Rock came out and talked shit for twenty minutes. Cena came out and destroyed him in two, and I gotta agree with that. Yeah, yeah. I really, yeah. aside from aside from the wrist comment, I thought it was I thought it was Cena's promo was, you know, it's like a San, it's Santino Morella versus Triple H kind of promo. Like there ain't nothing there. Yeah, okay, I fair st- enough. And RKO Voices kind of agrees with you there, saying that notes were put there on purpose. I still think WWE wouldn't let. Uh, Rock go out without asking why he put the notes there. It's for story driving purposes, and that's that's a really good point. But at the same time, Rock. I mean, a couple points. Rock hasn't done this in a while, and if you watched for up until basically uh, for most of the promo, they were only shooting the Rock from two angles, behind and from the right, yeah. which means that you couldn't see. I'm, I'm sorry, from the left, which means you couldn't see where you couldn't see on the left arm where the notes were, where he had it up in, on the mic. Every other shot was to the left. And behind them the entire time, except for one real quick clip where you saw the notes. So yeah, I I can't say that I I am enjoying this angle and this storyline for sure. They both were bad, but you know I can start to pick a side, and I haven't really been able to pick a side at all yet because I don't really care about this match. But this was a good you know start. Well, Garvin, I'll disagree. I don't think they were both bad, but. Uh... I, I I think they're both really good on the mic. That's I don't know, but I I will. I'm with everybody else. I think that if I had to pick a side, it's definitely seen at this point. Yeah, it, and it's and it's crazy. Can you imagine one month ago us saying that? I mean, that's yeah, shocking. Some... I wouldn't have said it. Yeah. And the and the other thing too, on a, just a side note, arguing and disagreeing or agreeing about whether Rocks or Cena's promos were good or not. Aside, I think that you you go talking about the whole motherfucking line. To me, after Cena did his thing and left. 
Rock looked totally caught off guard, mm-hmm. and, or at least looked it. I'm not going to say whether he was or wasn't because we don't know. But um, you could just tell his promo wrapping it up. He, he was just repeating himself a lot, saying the same thing almost exactly, saying I'll beat you at Mania, did his line, and that's it. So he just kind of bull rushed it out of there. And I, that totally – I've never seen Rock do that. Usually he's quick, on his feet, bang, bang, boom. Right, again, he hasn't been doing this for a while, but I was just like, wow. Never would expect to see Rock – doing something like that it just kind of completely caught me off guard yeah, yeah. It, it it was the first time that i can recall that i've ever seen the rock look like he didn't know what to do i wouldn't I go mean, that far I, I would say he was definitely on his back foot um well have you seen him in any of his movies because he pretty much okay. had that look in all of them yeah all right <laughs> yeah he's been in, that, 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 that that's the thing he's been in hollywood too long he he needs yeah. lines fed to him as opposed to being able to think on his feet now jeez. Oh, <laughs> All right, all right, all right. Uh, speaking of uh, useless arguments that probably won't go anywhere, ladies and gentlemen, it is time for an FTW sanctioned lumberjack match. A no DQ, no count out match to determine who is right. The ring is surrounded by every member of the FTW podcast, as I can see on our Skype. Uh, inside the ring stands two men, vaguely men, who are determined to make sure that everyone knows that they are correct. Fighting out of the blue corner, standing at four foot two and weighing in at two hundred and thirty-five pounds, he is hailing from Cincinnati, Ohio, and he is Kevin. And apparently, I'm a, apparently I'm a small fat ass. Thanks. Well, you're wide taller. <laughs> Fighting out of the red corner, standing in at eight foot three and weighing in at three hundred and seventy-five pounds from Chicago, Illinois. It is Rob. Now, gentlemen, do you understand the rules? Do you understand that if you falter at any point in this match, we will mock the ever-living shit out of you? Do you understand that? Yes. Then let's get this started. Okay, good. Let's get this started. I'm so excited. I'm talking over you guys. Answer the following question. True or false? Inside the Hell in the Cell, Triple H versus Undertaker at WrestleMania 28 will be fantastic. I'm about to flip my $50 American Buffalo 24 karat gold coin. Rob? You get the first minute. Go. Uh, false. I mean, uh, let's take a look at this. First and foremost, uh, with the PG era, no blood means there's no real hell in the cell. It's basically a cheap uh, imitation of what it used to be. The match loses a lot of its prestige. And both Undertaker and Triple H have had, have been held back by injuries and their um, um, and their age. I, I really think this match is going downhill. You you still have time. Oh, okay. Well, in that case, uh, due one, to that time, <laughs> due to that, uh, due to their age and injuries, even if you try to push the hell in the cell to what these two have made it in the past, they can't take it anymore. You still have time. What the hell? Can't, where, where, seriously, what is this? seriously. I guess what I'll take that time? extra time. This is like the first time in the history of our show that Rob's went under time twice in a row. Uh all right, that's, that's, I'll, fine. that's I'll, fine. I'll save it. I'll save it for. I'll save my other points for. He's later. whacking it. He's, oh, oh, oh. He's rope doping you, Kev. All right, go. Your minute starts now. Bottom line for this right now is this is a true statement. These are the two biggest superstars in the WWE, other than maybe Cena. The two top guys that can transcend a generation, and they talked about it. The way they played it up is perfect. We're the last of a dying breed. It has to be us. It has to end this way. This is the last one. And, you know, you know, some people say this is a gimmick match. No, this really isn't a gimmick match. This is more than a gimmick match. This match has defined careers. When I say Mick Foley to everyone in the chat and in this around the ring, quote unquote, uh, what do you think of? You think of Mick Foley flying off the top of the cage, falling into the announcer's table at Hell in the Cell 2, quite possibly one of the greatest matches of all time, at least top five for me, probably top three. This match transcends those things. Fine, there's not going to be blood. Who cares? They're still going to beat the hell out of each other. And the only way that they can do it, the only way that that they can go all out and lay it all on the line for 20 and 0 is to put it in the cage, Hell in the Cell, Make it happen. All right. All right. All right. All right. All right. Pull you guys apart. Rob, Rob, come here, buddy. Rob, come here. Come here. You want to take Kevin down? I'm going to give you two letters. And these are the only two letters that you need to know in order to take him down. P G. Exactly. Kevin, skull fuck him. 
Oh, that is such crap, Joe. Come on, you got to give him some kind of advice. Like, like they Keep going with it, like, Kevin. Okay, okay, right, so, so like they haven't done things in PG. Okay, there's not going to be any blood. Fine. Is there going to be tables? Is there going to be chairs? Is there going to be possibly a ladder? I doubt there will be a ladder, but even still. Tables, chairs, no holds barred. Possibly outside of the cage. You can still go outside Come of the on, cage. Come on, get him. I'm, I'm, I'm waiting. Okay, oh. here's what you're forgetting to take into consideration here, Kevin. Uh... The, the Hell in the Cell match requires a, a certain level of physicality, even if you want to leave the blood out of it, which these two guys can't do anymore. I mean, Undertaker has fought maybe a couple of matches since uh, the match last year at WrestleMania. Uh, contrary to what a lot of people like to think, I don't believe that the match last year between Triple H and Undertaker was as great as, say, HBK and Undertaker's first WrestleMania match of their to before uh, Michaels retired. Um, and this match is not going to get any better just because it's Hell in the Cell. You can't use Hell in the Cell. It's throwing Band-Aid on the wound. And the PG thing is going to severely hold it back. They might not be letting you longer be in their primes, but you are talking about two well-rested guys. Taker hasn't wrestled a match in a year. Ring Maybe rust. Ring rust, irrelevant. There's got to be him doing stuff at house shows, in the back, and getting ready for this. It, it, even if they're not in their prime, they're still going to be able to put their bodies on the line. They did tons of over-the-top things. No, Kevin. Last year in the match, that wasn't even a sell. No, Kevin. The, the, the Undertaker has had a couple of very high-profile matches very, you know, in the very distant or, or recent past where he couldn't make it through the entire match, where his body literally gave out on him. And now you're going to put him in hell in the cell, and you're, think, and you're going to think that he's that that's somehow going to make it awesome and that this is going to do anything? No, it, it's going to wear his body down faster, and he's not going to be able to make it through the match. Triple H, yeah, he might rise to the occasion. He might be able to deliver, but can he deliver and carry the Undertaker at the same time? I don't think he can. You're talking okay, about okay. two professionals. They might not be in their primes anymore in their prime condition. You were talking about two consummate professionals who know how to work together. And it also matters about the story that they tell. The first Hell in the Cell was one of the best stories I've ever seen in the wrestling ring where Taker kind of stalked Shawn Michaels the entire time because he knew he wasn't going anywhere. Shawn had to turn it on his head and start sacrificing his own body to make things happen. They can do the same sort of thing here. The cerebral assassin beats the hell out of The Undertaker, maybe The Undertaker comes back, does some things, is putting his own body on the line. It could it, Just as important as the story they might tell inside of that case, it doesn't necessarily have to be about all the physicality. Though I still think that's going to happen. I, I, but I, the story requires well, uh, that they be... Uh, I'm sorry, no, what? The, well, no, I'm just, you know, you're kind of... Uh, 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 I just want to make sure that you weren't, you know, your Skype wasn't acting up or anything. Anyway, continue. Uh... The problem with the uh, with that concept, Kevin, is the fact that let me tell you, let me give you one match from you know not too far in the past. Uh, Last Man Standing, Undertaker versus The Big Show. The Big Show, our Undertaker was clearly supposed to win that match, as evidenced by the fact that the referee count had to almost got almost to ten, and then had to stop the count and urge Undertaker to get up. Uh, The Undertaker is probably one of the best wrestlers of all time. I'm not going to argue that. I'm a huge Undertaker fan. But he is not just slightly past his prime. He is well past his prime. His injuries and his age have made it almost impossible for him to perform, which is why he doesn't perform anymore. And now you're going to throw him in hell in the cell. I understand what you're saying. The WWE could try a few things. I just don't think that whatever they try is going to work. I don't see any way this turns out to be a good match. Okay, i got to separate you guys for a second here because clearly you two are very... You're, you're entirely too good right now. Okay, both of you. Okay, this is annoying. You're supposed to be tripping over each other and sounding like idiots so we can make fun of you. Uh, I do want to bring up a couple things. One, first, uh, the last time Taker was in a Hell in a Cell, he lost to Kane in 2010. Two, Triple H won his last Hell in a, Cell, uh, Hell in a Cell match alongside HBK in 09. And three, Diva Jill brought it up. The only wrestling Taker has done in the last year has been with Michelle McCool. Triple H had to carry Undertaker through most of the last match last year, and it was ugly. A cell will just make it uglier. But Kevin brought up a really good point with the storyline. So keep Jill, that in mind. Jill, thank you. I'm glad somebody agrees with me. Stop pandering to the crowd and get back in there. 
So Ro- Rob needs it to be a handicap match. Got it. All right, well then, hey, let me back up, Kevin. I thought last year's match was fantastic. Yes. Um, it might have been slow. It might have been uh, a bad match to Diva Jill. But, you know, overall, it was a great story match. And it, that's exactly what we're going to get this this year. It's not going to be a great wrestling match, no. In the, in the sense of wrestling moves. But in the, in the stories that wrestling tells, it's going to be great. Yeah, and I don't know really how you guys can't see that. Garvin, you, really I... you really beat me to it because I was thinking all I remember, you know, Triple H puts him up for the tombstone, hits it, arm, arm. He does even the, the hair flip, one, two, and he kicks out. I mean, come oh, on. I'm getting great. goosebumps now just thinking about it, Kevin. Yes. Goosebumps. See, Rob, uh, now, as real long as Edge doesn't come, As long as Edge doesn't come from inside, underneath the ring and, and level, uh, level taken with a camera, I think we'll be all set. <laughs> I, I just don't think it's going to be a good match. Let's take a look at the last two WrestleMania matches that Undertaker's had. Well, last three matches. The first one that he fought against Triple H, or not Triple H, Shawn Michaels. That match was awesome. It was epic. Those two put on one of the best wrestling matches I've ever seen in my life. Then next year, they did the same thing. It wasn't half as good as the match before that, and we all said it. We all were disappointed in that match. Now, last year in WrestleMania, they came in. Uh, we had a good, you can argue, the good story match. I, th- I, I, I can see that. I, I kind of agree with it, but I don't think it was as good as people were expecting when you looked at the names Triple H and The Undertaker. And now, what what's happening is, because you're throwing it in Hell in the Cell, you've got people like you, Kevin, I, I, I mean... There, there are a lot of people like you who think just because it's Hell in the Cell and it's The Undertaker and it's Triple H that it's going to be this awesome, awesome match. And that's going to set the bar a lot higher than I think these two are prepared to, or are prepared physically or mentally to be able to deliver. I want to interject one quick thing on that, though, before I get, you know, before I get cut off or anything. Um, I do agree with... Kevin a little bit more than Rob. Rob, you do bring up some good points, but I overall agree with Kevin. And there's one big factor in this too. You're right. The fact that I thought personally Triple H and Undertaker last year was very good, all things considered. You're right. Taker's health and his wrestling ability is questionable. And to be fair, we don't know. We haven't seen him in a year. We haven't seen what he's done. I'm not saying he's going to be at the prime of his wrestling ability, clearly, but we don't know if he's gotten better. I'm just being, you know, trying to be nice to Taker. But anyway, um, Long story short, my big point is that even – and that's trying to insult wrestling fans in general. Wrestling doesn't really matter much in a Hell in a Cell match. Being able to physically perform an actual technical wrestling match inside the structured Hell in a Cell won't really come much into play. It's mainly going to be a, a, a kick-ass brawl fight and just a barbaric fight between the two of them. might start off as a wrestling matchup. Right, but, which the two can't do anymore. That's my point. You. No, and, and I, I kind of do agree with you, but in the sense of the Hell in the Cell match, it's not going to matter that much, at least not towards – at least after the first quarter of the match. It's not going to matter. These two are just going to beat the living hell out of each other, and that's so you what think, – So you think if these guys have a good, let's say, first quarter uh, of the match, that, that, that that'll make it a good match, that if they – if if they go into it and they just beat the ever living crap out of each other for you know the first few minutes of the match and something that'll take care of them having to slow down for the end or possibly end the match earlier than they normally would. You're asking if the ends justify the means, more or yeah, less. Yes. Uh, it depends. It depends because I've seen Hell in a Cell matches suck, and I mean horribly suck, and. It depends on how far they're willing to go, and the whole PG thing is a big, a big factor. Camper. Yeah, no, I, yeah, that's that's a big thing, and it's a question of whether or not they're going to break the PG or not. If they keep, I mean, you can have a good match and still keep it PG, but in the Hell in a Cell, eh, no, I, I think you're right. If if they if they keep it PG, if they keep it toned down, and they limit what they do in the Hell in a Cell match itself, no. I'm just saying is that. In, in your case, you're you're debating of okay, Taker and Triple H, they can't have a good wrestling match. To be honest with you, unless Triple H is t- carrying it, I agree with you. Taker is not in his prime condition anymore to have a stellar classic wrestling match. But can he still deliver at Mania and Hell in a Cell? I still think so. 
Uh, well, we'll see when uh, right, WrestleMania right. comes along. All right, all right, all right. Time to go to the judge's decision. Final thoughts, you guys. Rob, what's your final final thoughts? Given everything that happened in this debate, you get one last chance to state your case, and then Kevin does, and we're both going to call you idiots and move on. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Well, I, it, I mean, it's like I said, I, I really can't say it any better. I mean, I think the age, uh, the injury factor, the factor that Undertaker hasn't wrestled in a year, and there are certain expectations for Hell in the Cell that the WWE can't meet anymore because of where they've gone as a company and where these wrestlers are because of where they're at in their lives. I don't think that the wrestlers and the company can meet the expectations that's going to be put on it, and uh, thus I think it's a bad idea to tease us with it. Okay, Kevin? 19-0 to become 20-0 leaves the hype for this incredibly high. I think that alone, putting that in the cell with the two biggest superstars the WWE has for the last 20 years, well, the last 10 years for Triple H and the last 20 years for Taker, um, puts this on a pedestal to make it a great match. Uh, I, I will also say that the thought that Triple H could possibly win this, which people brought up in the chat tonight, also adds an air of intrigue that I think will make this possible. Remember, I don't think Triple H will win it, but I love the fact that people think that it's possible. I don't um, think it's a possibility. But... Okay, whatever. No, you can't do chance, world. Sorry, uh, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. The winner is us, the and for watching this exciting debate, great minds coming together. No, this match is going to be spectacular. It's the same thing like, look, Rob, you're right. They're old, okay? But at the same time, so was Clint Eastwood, and Gran Torino was still amazing, and he took down a gang in that one. So so I just want to let you guys know, you're both wrong. I'm right. Clint Eastwood's awesome. Anyway, moving on. Uh, we're going to skip the main event and go right into quick hits. For those of you guys new to the show, each one of us is going to get 30 seconds to sign off on a news topic. If there's time afterwards, we'll scream at each other for a little bit. Item number one on the docket. Here's another conversation about championships in wrestling. They seem to have somewhat gone up and down in value as of late. Last year at WrestleMania, the world title match was the curtain-jerking match, and even lately we've seen the decline in value for such titles as the WWE Tag, TNA Knockouts Tag, and the TNA TV title. That still exists. Uh, should these championships be abolished? Should some return? And are there too many or not enough titles in wrestling? Joe. Um... I think that you could probably abolish something, let's say, like the U.S. title. You can kill the Knockouts Tag titles and the TNA television title. I don't think you should kill the WWE Tag Team titles only because there's a lot of a lot of history behind those things, and um, you need a tag team title in something like WWE, something as big as WWE. Okay, Kevin. Yeah, I, I agree. Um... You know, I, I think that they need to keep them around. I realize there's a ton of titles, but I still think tag team wrestling has a has a place. I, I still really enjoy it, so I don't want to see that go away. You know, same thing, you know, with, you know, I mean, there's a lot of TNA titles, but you got to put belts on guys to get them pushes even smaller belts. So I, I don't think they should go. I don't think too many should go away, maybe one or two. Okay. Connor. <laughs> I think that um, in TNA, I think the knockouts tag need, need to go. There's no, they're not really doing anything with other than teasing tension, and there hasn't been enough depth in the TNA knockouts tag team roster to do anything um, with it. At least not yet, anyway. They could. I think the TV title does have some potential if they just repackage it a certain way. I think if you make that into a championship that um, just is nothing but pure wrestling, not so much storyline driven, but more just athletic athletic ability. You can turn the TV title into something great. As far as the tag team in WWE, while it's declining, I think um, I, I think they just need okay. to repackage it and build it up better. <laughs> Rob, go. Uh, I'm completely with Joe here uh, I, I, and Connor. I, I think you have to get rid of the uh, knockouts tag team titles. Uh, there's not enough depth on the knockouts roster, and the knockouts don't get enough time to really focus on a knockout uh, tag team division. And uh, the TV title definitely has to go uh, for uh, TNA. That, that that title's a joke. It's got no real credibility. Um, you can maybe get rid of the U.S. titles and the WWE, but I think you have to keep their tag team titles. 
Okay. Uh, I got to be honest, for every two hours of wrestling you get, you get three and a half divisions is how you got to look at it. So it, you basically, you can you can get away with having three divisions plus a half and have one at some point on, another one off or something like that. But going any more than that and you run into the issue that we're running into right now, any less, and you have the Divas division. So the fact is that these titles can have places, but they need to have time on television. They need to have the roster depth. And so tag, knockouts tag... TNA TV, that's got to go. Uh, WWE tag, please keep it around. Uh, in the um, chat, RKO Voices. God, this guy is on a roll. Uh, kill the Divas title, bring the old prestigious women's title back. Tag titles have so much prestige, and WWE has been ruining them hard. Uh, women's title isn't coming back. Uh, Divas is a brand, and that's sticking around. Speaking of brands, it seems the NXT is being treated like nothing but a brand at this point. Should it finally end? Matt Stryker made a reference to a special announcement this coming week, but also noted that this season of NXT has gone on for a year. Ouch. What can be done to save this brand Is it, if it is even savable at this point? Joe. Well, you need to take it out back, throw it down on the ground, and shoot it. This this thing needs to go the way of eight bells and be put down. NXT is n- apparently not worth watching, but I bet they're going to come back and say, yeah, the show is actually going to be moved to the WWE Network in 2012 or 2013 or whatever the fuck they're doing that. So, yeah, okay. get rid of it. It's a waste. All right, Rob. Double tap to the back of the head. <laughs> okay, <laughs> Kevin. Yes, uh, put this thing out of its misery. Ugh, we've been bitching about NXT for I don't know how long, and I'm tired of it. Just stop it. I, I, it's it's not any good. <laughs> I'm sorry. No, it's when Chris Masters at some point was supposed to be one of the quote-unquote wrestling experts, I'm training guys. I mean, doesn't that about say it all? Yeah, and, that's fair enough. Okay, Connor. Needless to say, the point of the fact is that they've had an entire season season go for an entire full calendar year uninterrupted, and there's still two guys. Now, keep in mind, I haven't watched an NXT, but there's still two guys at the top, and they still haven't clearly gotten the winner. I'm definitely agreeing with anyone. Just kill the damn thing. Just finish it. End it. It's 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 too far gone for it to be saved. Okay. Point. Uh, yeah, it, it's gone. It existed in this weird situation between semi-reality TV and just a regular another scripted promo and or another scripted program, and it just didn't work. Uh, they were trying to straddle too many things with this, and it just no, 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 no. All right, Garvin, go. I disagree. Um, I don't think they should get rid of NXT. What they really should do is, um, like RKO Voices in the chat says, you know, bring up some guys from FCW. Um, to fill out the roster with some actual quality uh, guys. So it's not, you know, um, A-Rai and Titus O'Neil and uh, Tyler Rex every single week. Um, throw throw in some more guys. Combine um, NXT and Superstars. And, yes, treat it as a third brand. Um, and, you know, it would be nice to actually give them a title, which is something we, we had talked about before, you know, maybe move the U.S. title down. So, you no, know, I, I disagree. I think there's a lot of depth that they can play with and build the next mid-carder to, to be pulled up, which is something that the WWE needs. Okay, fair enough. Next one on the docket, TNA seems to be on a roll lately with their storylines, and it can be somewhat credited to Rude as a champion, uh, putting some new focus on other TNA talent. Uh, is there someone in TNA that should be getting the giant push in TNA that hasn't been, or uh, how long do you think Rude will be holding the championship for? Go, Joe. You know, they have been improving the storylines a bit, and being a a credited to Rude is... You've got your own time, dipshit. Um, <laughs> so... <laughs> Root, Root being champion, being credited for it, I don't know about that. I think it's been interesting with the turnover of a lot of the guys uh, in the back as far as the writing staff goes, but I don't know. I think that TNA is getting ready to turn a corner, and I think Root as champion could be part of the beginning of that. Okay. Rob. Uh, I agree with Joe. Um, I think uh TNA is starting to turn a corner. They're getting really good. Um, after Rude uh, loses the title, I'd like to see um, James Storm and uh, Bully Ray get a bigger push like we were talking about earlier. Okay. Kevin. 
Yeah, I, I think a lot of it has to do with the changing of the guard and Vince Russo being gone. I mean, you know, it's just been a little bit of time to leave, and, and it, it's definitely improved. So, uh, you know, let's see what keeps going. I, I think Rude should hold the championship for a while. He's doing a great job. Keep it on him. Give him a whole bunch of legitimacy. Guy I want to see close is the same guy I always bitch about who never gets pushed, and that's Samoa Joe. I just don't get it. Why not? Push yes. him. Put him in there. And, and, and Joe's going to kill you. He's totally over. Why don't they push Samoa Joe? I just don't get it. That's what I want to see. All right. Connor Yankum, DDS. Go. <laughs> <laughs> I'm pretty much going to agree with Kevin. Um, I think Rude should hold the championship for, in my opinion, I think he should hold for a full solid year. Give him some credit as a top heel. I mean, he just kind of, not ran, well, kind of randomly got thrown up to the world championship uh, reign. And to his credit, he's been carrying it very well. Great promos, great matches. I think that if you really want to solidify him as a top heel in uh, TNA, give him a nice, long, healthy title run uh, to solidify him. And definitely agree with Joe being pushed. Another guy I'd like to see up on top is Daniels. I think Daniels has been a guy who's been floating around mid. He did a little bit on the top, but I think if you give him a nice, good chunk of time, he'll do very well. All right, uh, Matt Turn, Joe's going to kill you. I mean, yeah, Kevin, you guys put it exactly right. Uh, Joe's going to kill you. Fantastic. Uh, Matt Morgan, I'd like to see back in the main title picture. Yeah, I know him and Crimson and Magnus and Samoa Joe are doing fantastic on the tag titles. But if we're going to take Joe away from that, take Matt Morgan away from that too, you know, let's kick some ass with these two guys. I really think Matt Morgan is – he did a great job, you know, when he was kind of – I want to say in the transition carrying of the banner guard after Jeff Hardy. And I think he can do a fantastic job again. Whew. All right. Time for the undercard. After impact, Aries tweeted that he wasn't surprised that Sting booked himself in the pay-per-view main event instead of giving the main event spotlight to someone who deserved it like him. Uh, he has since deleted it. I think his quote was uh, something like, um, uh, I promise to never book myself in a match except for when I book myself in a match or something like that. He was very, very clearly upset that Stang did that. Uh, number two, it's anything a fair from point too. Oh. It is, yeah. Uh, I think uh, I think Aries has a legitimate bitch. Yeah, but Twitter might not be the best place to put it. Fair enough. Oh yeah, I, I agree. Got to do I mean, when, is, when has ever a wrestler gotten in trouble for something they tweeted? <laughs> oh never. <laughs> That's never come back to bite him. No, no, never. All right. Uh, TMZ has published footage of WWE Legends House participants in a Zumba class for the show. Zumba's like curves, but... Or no, it's a dance thing, isn't it? Yeah, it's a dance it's like thing. A, it's like yeah, it's, a Tybo. It's like the yeah. newest Tybo thing, yeah. Yeah, okay. Uh, okay, anyway, so yeah, they were doing a dance class. Uh, we see Hacksaw Jim Duggan, Jimmy Hart, Roddy Piper, Hillbilly Jim, if anybody remembers him, Gene Okerlund, Howard Finkel, Tony Atlas, and ladies and gentlemen, Pat Patterson... At a dance club studio in Palm Springs. Pat Patterson. So this is what it looks like to be your Legends House first edition class or whatever. This show, it's either going to be the greatest thing ever. I mean, this is, oh, I, it, I, I suddenly get why people like those housewives of Madison County or whatever it is. I suddenly get <laughs> it. D- d- dudes, Jersey Shore makes sense to me now. This is going to be just... Uh, uh, this is going to be a slow motion train wreck over the course of an hour every week. <laughs> it's going to be terrible. No, train wreck. The guy, the conductor is on meth. The thing's on fire, running over, you know, in NASCAR, jet engine. It's, oh, it's going to be, oh. <laughs> but that's the beauty of it. That's going to be the beautiful thing of it. It's like, oh, these guys were legends, and now it just. Look at exactly. how far they've fallen. <laughs> <laughs> Look how far they can fall. God damn it. I mean. Oh, they all broke their hips. No, no, no. I mean, just I wanted oh. Sheik to be in there. I thought Iron Sheik and G. Okerlund. Oh, that would have just been. No, no, hilarious. that's season two, man. That is season two. Oh, <laughs> cannot wait. Oh, uh, um, yeah. So that 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 is going to be that is going to be spectacular. All right, you guys ready for? Whip they now? need a show. They need a show to be Sheik knows best. Yeah, <laughs> he just gives advice. Yeah. It's yeah, it's a radio call. Yes. It's like uh, it's like Doctor Oz. He's got the audience and everything, and he's just he's got <laughs> Iron Sheik. What do I do? I really want this girl to like me. Go fuck yourself. Next caller. <laughs> you need to go. Iron Sheik. Do you really Hogan. think? Iron Sheik. What do you really think of Hogan? Fuck Hulk Hogan. No, he ties everything. He suck down. Vince ass. <laughs> suck Vince dick. <laughs> he just ties every conversation back to Hogan. Sir, I don't know what to do. My financial straits are in horrible shape. Well, you need to get your bank and fuck it to Hulk Hogan. Fuck him. 
<laughs> Fuck the beat, Brian Blair. No, he's got to do the. Uh, he, he if 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 Ty, okay if if he's gonna do that, if Sheik's gonna do it, he's got to do the paternity test thing because would do, who else would you want to tell you if you're the dad than the Iron Fucking Sheik? <laughs> Not your father. It's bullshit. Fucking bullshit. <laughs> She you should have wrapped your meat. Hulk Hogan no wrap his meat and his son wrap car around tree. Fuck you, fuck Hulk Hogan. <laughs> oh, <laughs> Chad's oh, saying oh. that the Legends House oh. needs more Finley. <laughs> God. Oh, nice. How could you yeah. make this even Could you worse? imagine Finley and Rowdy Roddy Piper? <laughs> that would be awesome. Just they, all they do is just it'd be just the oh, best. Oh. It'd be that it'd be that scene in Indiana Jones where it was like that drinking match. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, there should be the two of them every night just drinking <laughs> and putting down shot glasses. Like, just taking raw shots of just pure malt liquor and just calling each other a pussy. <laughs> just have an open, open bar in the house. That's it. And, and me and Gene would be the, the, oh, the moderator God. slash ref. And, you know, uh, no, no, okay. Of all the people on here that we want to see get drunk, it's Pat Patterson and Gene Okerlund. I mean, come on. Oh, yeah. <laughs> no, I mean... I'm just waiting for for Iron Cheek, and this is a direct quote where they asked him, "What do you think of Tito Santana? He's not bad for a Mexican." <laughs> <laughs> Chat saying they want Iron Cheek and Sergeant Slaughter to do a Love Line type show. Oh, oh. we got to record this with WWE. We are minting gold this Tuesday night. <laughs> yes, oh. we are. <laughs> Sergeant All right. Slaughter giving dating advice. All right, time for a win fail. Oh, oh, oh. Uh. <laughs> our wins of the week uh wins of the week uh joe what's your win of the week it, it, i look my win, of the, my win of the week is our discussion of legends our version of legends house <laughs> seriously this is pure win <laughs> <laughs> everything's oh. better with chic fuckers oh my cheeks i'm tearing i'm tearing up oh god uh rob your win of the week go uh my win, my win of the week is our idea for Iron Sheik doing a call-in show. <laughs> God. This is the new Donahue. Fuck you, man. I told him to treat him as a shit. Fuck you. And that Santino Mexican motherfucker. Everyone look under your chair. You look under your chairs and I say, fuck you, you look under your chairs. <laughs> you piss on picture of Hulk Hogan. Fuck Hulk Hogan. We come uh, right back after these commercials. Perfect English. She's like, fuck it, you in America. We'll be right back after these commercial breaks. I want Iron Sheik to be Oprah so bad. Uh, they're about the same size have, now. And he, could have, and, he could have, and he could have a special guest, you know, bring on Ultimate Warrior. Just have the two of them. Oh, my God. Have Iron Sheik just take over the Maury show for a week. That's it. That's You don't need any guests. Just let him take over for the week. <laughs> God, I'm gonna pee. <laughs> <laughs> oh, shit. No, Welcome I'm to Maury's show. Maury bitch note here. Me Sheik. Me fucking you. <laughs> oh, my God. We are just eating internet time. All right. Who's next? Who haven't I done yet? We did, uh, we did Rob. Uh, Kevin, you're winner of the week. Go, Kev. Uh, I'll I'll actually do something different, I guess. Uh, my, win the, my win of the week is Teddy Long's suit on Raw, man. That thing was pimp. Yeah, right. Like red checkerboard with the white vest and the the tie. I gotta give it up, man. He was looking pretty pretty damn good. I was like Teddy, way to come strong. Yeah, really. It's first time in uh, one, well, you know, it's like two straight weeks for Teddy Long, like doing something right. So I had to give it up to the guy. <laughs> All right. Uh, <clears throat> excuse me. Sorry, Connor. Your win of the week. I am the win of the week. You sons of bitches! Stop it! Stop it! I can't. <laughs> <stop it. laughs> All right, in all seriousness, uh, Punk and Brian on SmackDown was definitely my win of the week. Uh, enough said. Great wrestling match. Uh, awesome job. I haven't seen a match like this in quite a while, so that's definitely got to be my win of the week. Okay, Garvin, your win of the week. Go. Okay, uh, my win of the week is uh, Tyson Kidd. Um, he continues to uh, progress in this face role that they've given him, um, and it's fantastic. Uh, I think everything that they're doing with Tyson Kidd is great, and um, yeah, I'm glad that they're finally pushing him into a spot where he can succeed. Because lately, I mean, you know, up to this point, he hasn't been able to get that that chance. So. Okay. Oh, oh. Also, uh, I want to throw a shout out to. Um, 
our friends over at um, the Real American Wrestling Critics. Uh, they're another YouTube show. Uh, they they sent us a shout out um, this week, so we're returning the favor. Um, at Bob the eighty sixer on Twitter um, has been uh, really great in conversations uh, on all the shows. Um, the same thing for Heel Heel Zahir uh, on Twitter. Uh, he's also on on Facebook, um, and and he agrees with us or with me at least about uh, Tyson Kidd. So, um, anyways, that's it. Okay. No, that's great. Uh, all right, my win. I have two wins. Uh, one is the new WWE Studios movie coming up, Bending the Rules. Uh, it looks like At the Movies with Harrison and Ebert will make a triumphant return. Yes. Oh, it's yes. Yes. Uh, I, I yes. Have, uh, I am so excited for this. I have already started writing. Yes. Harrison and Harrison. Yes. Harrison and Harrison. yes. Sir, I had a win. <laughs> well, yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm really looking forward to it uh, because all the WWE Studio movies have been, you know, documentaries and stuff, and I don't feel right doing it with those but this is going to be fantastic um and honestly i think with the way the storylines are going between daniel bryan and cm punk jericho and uh sheamus i honestly think with even bringing in the raw you know um laurinitis and uh everything i honestly think they're moving to merge the titles at wrestlemania and i just want to put that out there i, I think that's a just that is a card it's on the table i think we could have a possibility of merging the titles at wrestlemania at least the storylines could be steering that way. All right, fails of the week. Your fail of the week, go Joe. Um, my fail of the week is going to be the Eve Kelly Kelly segment after Eve did her uh, bit. I, I just don't, you know, all of a sudden, you know, Kelly's like, oh my God, you're like totally a different person now. Why are you such a bitch? Yeah. And I'm like, really, Kelly, nobody cares. Nobody cares about you and what you feel. Okay. Yeah. Fair enough. Kevin, your fail of the week. My fail is the bearing of Ezekiel Jackson. I just don't get it. Why are you having him lose to these guys? I think he has a lot of talent. I think he's, you know, unless there's something that we don't know and maybe, you know, guys are getting hurt, but I don't understand it. He, he, I think the guy's a good talent. He, I think he has a lot of potential and it just doesn't make a lot of sense to me. I, I think it's unfortunate and I hope it stops because uh, I, I think he deserves a shot to show what he can do. Okay. Uh, oh, sorry. Uh, Rob, go. Uh, my fail of the week is uh keeping Jeff Hardy around in the title picture. Get him the fuck out of the TNA title picture. The sooner the better. Okay, Connor, your fail of the week. I gotta say, it was with the exception of Brian versus Punk SmackDown. I didn't like a thing about SmackDown really. I mean, between Otunga and ja- or Jackson getting buried by Otunga and then Drew McIntyre versus Kali, come on. I mean, more more so Kali and Drew, but just overall, SmackDown just really disappointed me, with obviously the exception of the main event. Um, that's definitely going to be my fail. Okay. Garvin, your fail of the week. Go. Uh, my fail of the week goes to you guys for saying that uh, Dolph and Kofi – got the biggest pushes in that uh, triple threat tag match. That wasn't all of us. Um, that was me. Well, whomever said it, uh, you know, this guy, the, the real winners in that match was the tag team champions. I mean, they got a major push. They got over four top tier guys. And um, I thought that was fantastic that they finally gave them, you know, a huge win on national TV. Uh, I think that's great for the tag team division. So, uh, fail to you, Harrison, for not not giving them credit. Oh, we could do a lumberjack. We could do a lumberjack match about this right now. Uh, I disagree because I think it's only a blip on the radar. Whereas if you look at what Kofi and Ziggler have been doing, and then that match, I look at that, and honestly, that match solidified the fact that Kofi Kingston is going to be the face of SmackDown, definitely SmackDown, in a year to two years. But that match did it for me. Watching him come out, the whole thing, that was it. My fail of the week is um, Rock's promo. Uh, specifically Rock's promo on Raw and this whole feud between him and Cena, it feels like a custody hearing over us. Rock talks about how he's coming back, how he loves the WWE, and WWE's marketing department is like that little kid in the family that idolizes The Rock and starts freaking out when he finds out he's coming by for a visit. Basically, we sit there and say, but he's only staying for the afternoon. Then he has to go back to his other family in Tulsa. Meanwhile, the WWE marketing department's like, no, uh he's going to stay this time because we really want him to, and he's bringing a Wii. So this whole thing is just... It, 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 that whole promo, all I could think of is like, this is like watching a stepdad and a mom fighting over kids. And it was just like, ugh. 
I mean, that's the, 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 but it's just the way. The only reason it's it seems that way is because the WWE marketing department is framing it where it's coming off that way, and it's just, I it just ruined ruined that whole promo for me. All right, uh, last week we unveiled our plan to con- uh, create a hall of shame based on judgment of us fans. Uh, construction's underway. You can thank downtown Detroit. We are renovating it one building at a time. Uh, the official induction ceremony will take place Saturday, March 31st. We asked you for nominations. You sent some in. All of them we really agree on as we went through mo- most wrestlers, everything like that. Now we want you to send in worst managers in the history of wrestling. You can tweet those to us uh, at FTWPodcast.com or you can post them on our Facebook page slash FTWPodcast.com. Special shout out to the Pro Wrestling Marks Facebook group. You guys have been awesome. Lots of great conversations on their group. You can definitely check out their blog at prowrestlingmarks.blogspot.com. So check them out. Like their Facebook page, doing all kinds of fun stuff. Uh, And actually, if you want to take part in a fan based Hall of Fame, you know, kind of like the opposite of our joke thing and a very serious thing that's really worth discussing uh, and not wasting your time by. You know, talking about Dink the Clown, uh, you can see that they've got one rolling on their Facebook group, so definitely get involved. Uh, and I'd like to say that we're giving away t- uh, excuse me, <clears throat> and we'd like to start giving away t-shirts at our store. Wait, we're giving away my work? I don't like that. Uh, so if you'd like to be in on running to win a free t-shirt, because I didn't work hard enough on them, send us a question <laughs> to our voicemail line, 313-444-3894. That's 313-444- uh, FTW forum. For those of you who don't make phone calls, and prefer to send us to carrier pigeons or these newfangled email fads. Uh, questions at ftwpodcast.com. Only audio questions will be entered into the contest because then we can play them on the air. Uh, make sure to include your name and email address in the file so we can contact you if you've won. Um, obviously, we'll delete the email afterwards after we sell it a few times so that way we can get the spam. Um, we're going to shelf WrestleMania right now. We'll talk about it again next week because uh, basically we've discussed it to no end. Uh, Garvin, you got a note? Yeah, uh, I just wanted to let you guys know that, um, quote, he's bringing a Wii is trending on Twitter right now, uh, <laughs> as, as well as uh, in, in the live chat. So. <laughs> uh, damn. okay. I'm surprised Iron Sheik wasn't trending for a while. Oh, Iron Sheik is always trending. Iron Sheik will be trending 500 years from now when pro wrestling is done with laser beams and light rings. <laughs> There will still be discussing Iron Sheik. Uh, question of the week. Man, we got to have a good question of the week. Uh, what should be a good one? Oh, okay. Uh, Ro- okay. Who won the Lumberjack match on our show? Kevin or Rob? Do you think that the Hell in a Cell Triple H Undertaker match at, tw- at WrestleMania 28 will be fantastic or a disaster? Let us know. We're going to post it on Facebook as all, uh, and Twitter and all kinds of other stuff. As always, you can find in this episode as well as our entire archive at ftwpodcast.com, facebook.com slash ftwpodcast, twitter.com slash ftwpodcast, youtube.com slash the FTW podcast. Voicemail us at 313 ftw 4 That's 313 You can send us questions to questions at the ftwpodcast.com. And please rate us on iTunes because every time we get rated on iTunes, an angel get his wings. You guys ready to get out of here? I really gotta pee. See ya. God, I gotta pee. You gonna have a water bottle like I do?